Hi, everybody. Can we rejoice? And the truth is, yes, we can. And I'd like to just share an insight with you that I heard from Rav Shei Shechta, where he asked the question, what is it when we speak about in the Alanisim, Ala Milchamot, Vala Teshuot, what are the Milchamot? What are we celebrating for? Nobody celebrates war. We know we're in the middle of this war, which is so terrible, so brutal, so violent, so vicious. So what is there to celebrate? Why do we say thank you, Hashem, for the war? Nobody wants a war. And he explains that what, what is it that we're actually celebrating? So there are two wars that we fight. The one is the physical war. And Baruch Hashem, our, our army, our boys, our men, our children, people who should be sitting at home with their families, lighting their Hanukkah candles, people who should be sitting in the streets of Eretz Israel, celebrating with their Sufgani Yot. And where are they now? They're sitting in, in Gaza, in Aza, fighting our enemy, physical, hard, difficult battles. And let's take a point in the time just to reflect on the losses that have been incurred. So many of our beautiful soldiers, so many of our brothers, sisters, people have been injured. And please God, our Kodesh Baruch Hu should bring Nisim and Iflaot, miracles and wonders to save them and to help them. And please God, everybody should be well. And that's one part of the Milchama, and that is the physical Milchama. But there's another part of the war. And this is the part that we are able to celebrate even when there is a war. And that is the war that we understand that we fight all the time against our enemies. But, but we are the Amanetzach. We are the eternal people. We've been fighting these wars for 3,000 years. And we know that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And it takes time. And so therefore we're able to bring within this deep kavura, this deep, deep heroism. The ability to, to interact, to transact, to be a part of life at the same time as we have these difficulties that we're experiencing and how difficult they are. The word of the day in context. How can it be that you can't just say, yes, it's anti-Semitic, it's hatred, and it spews and creates the most terrible, terrible consequences when people speak in that way. But we have to understand that this is part of the battle. The battle that Yaakov and Asa fought in the parish that we read last week. Yaakov and Asa are fighting, well, the, the, the angel of Asa are fighting, and they're fighting and they're fighting and they're fighting. And eventually, when it's time, when the dawn comes up, and the angel says to Yaakov, Let me go. And he says to him, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he says to him, What's your name? And he says, My name is Yaakov. And he gives him a brocha that his name should be changed from Yaakov to Israel. And then Yaakov says to him, What's your name? Simple question, give an answer. Everybody knows their name, and the angel doesn't give him an answer. And says Rav Shechta, you know why he doesn't give him an answer? Because that fight is the fight that is the paradigm of all the fights, of all the conflicts, of all the difficulties that we as Am Yisrael will go through. And the reality is, the enemy keeps changing. Never has a standard name. And that's why on this Hanukkah, like every other Hanukkah, we can celebrate and we must celebrate and we must daven and we must learn and we must pray that those poor, wonderful, incredible people that are there facing the conflict, the difficulty, the violence, we must daven for them that they'll be okay and we must celebrate the fact that they can be there. Because the miracle that we celebrate this year Hanukkah is the miracle of Medinat Israel, the miracle of our land, of our state, of our army, of our people who are there protecting each and every single one of us so that we can live as proud Jews and not worry about what they're saying at Harvard, at Penn University. Yes, it creates a certain level of anxiety, and let's not forget that. And not to worry about the fact that our South African government is hosting people from Hamas and the Hamas delegations. Or we don't have to worry because we are Amanetzach. We are the people that, despite it all, we know that our enemies are going to change. But we know that our Kodesh Baruch Hu is looking after us. And he looks after us because of one thing. And that's our achdut. That's our coming together. 
And that's very much what this light is all about. If you look at the candle of the uh, of the Chanukia, there's all different colors in that light. There's blue light, there's brown light, there's yellow light, and it gives off a white light. All different colors, because that's Am Yisrael. We're all different colors. We're all different types. And sometimes the flame is burning bright, and sometimes it's not burning at all. But as long as it's a little bit burning, then you know what? As long as it's a little bit burning, then the light can be seen. And please, God, on this first night of Hanukkah, may the light of Am Yisrael shine. Shine and start getting brighter and brighter and brighter because mile in Kedusha, we go up and we go up and we go up in Kedusha, in sanctity, in unity. And then we'll be victorious. Like in those days, it should be in this day. That a Kodesh Baruch should come to protect us, to be with us. And we give a brocha to our soldiers, to our people. Hashem should be with you. Hashem should be with you all. And you're going out into war and you're coming back from war to your beloved families. From now and forever. Please God, we should be able to celebrate victory and the victory of our souls, of our nefesh, of our being, of our people, of our physicality. And please God, we should be able to celebrate together with the return of all of those beautiful hostages, all of those beautiful Jews who are themselves waiting for their lights to be shone upon them. Yachad together we will prevail.